Oh, thank you, Sheffield. Thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It's the players, really. I just, I just lead the way. It's the players that do all the hard work. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Sheffield. No, no, you deserve the applause. You're the real heroes here. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain and welcome to the Summer Transfer Special here at Sheffield Wednesday as we move from Season 6 into Season 7. We are Europa League champions. We are looking to build a team to go into the Champions League. And, well, hopefully, well, we can't do much worse than we did last time we were there where we didn't get a point. Um, but hopefully we'll manage to do very, very well and maybe even win it. Who knows? Now, if we look at the team that we have coming into the, into the window, areas I'd like to strengthen. Relatively happy with left back, relatively happy with centre back. Defensively, I would like to get a better right back in. I think we do need an upgrade on Del Prato. And I'm not convinced that Martinez is first choice. So that's somewhere I'd like to improve. I would like to improve and upgrade an upgrade on Lewis Cook. I think we could maybe look to do that. Um, otherwise, I'm relatively happy. We could maybe, maybe get a, a, an upgrade in the center of the park as well. But I'm relatively happy. Eduardo Samare, good. Augusto's a good backup. Leighton Clarkson just fits in well with the squad, with the way we play. Uh, and we have, of course, Arentes as a backup for number 10. Pretty happy with that. And I'm quite happy with our strikers as well. So I don't think there's too much to do this window. It's going to be a case of... Um, sort of evolution rather than revolution. And if we have a quick look at what the squad that we had and what we did last year, if we start with appearances, um, I do always think the best place to look. You can see Lewis Cook played a lot of games for us, but maybe, I mean, a 6.95, I think as a deep line playmaker, we maybe do need a little bit better than that. But if we look at the guys who didn't play, and this is sort of the, the people we can maybe look to get rid of, Sodlikov, I'm not convinced he's going to make it, though I do still like him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't think he's maybe quite good enough. Mateo is someone I would like to give more game time to. I think he could come through for us. Um, Dylan Keach is another one. Club trained player. We need him at the club uh, to, and we need him playing well. Obviously, Sousa just came in this past January. I think he could be a decent left back option for us. If we're looking at people, we might look to move on. I think Ross McCrory, although he is club captain, maybe we're moving past him. Uh, 28, this might be sort of one of the last chances we get to sell him onto the profit. His contract is up in a few years' time. So uh, there's a little bit of interest there. Where's that interest? West Brom and Villarreal. So we might try, if we can get 20 million for him, I'll absolutely be stoked. Um, Edwards is another one. Could we look to do a little bit better with wingers? Uh, it worked at times for us last season. Edwards, if we get anywhere near 40 million for him, I think we'd take it. His contract is up next season, so we do need to make a decision on him this summer, I think, whether he's staying or going. Taimon, I think, is someone we might look to move on. Um, 27, he's not first choice anymore. There's the youngsters, youngsters that we have are roughly at his level and the potential to get better. And again, if we can get 28 million for him, I'll be very, very happy indeed. Um, and everybody else here, I'm relatively happy to keep. Basila, I think, was a disappointment, but I'm willing to give him a second season, you know, a year to settle in. Next season, he's going to have to do, you know, do his thing. That being said, if we were to get 50 million for him, I would, uh, <laughs> I'd let him go. Um, everybody else there, though, we're ve I'm very, very happy with. Now, if we look at the goals, obviously, we know Razzini is our star, but Giordano got 14 goals. Very good for him. Bruma got 13. The Ghana was quite good, and Pekovic all got to double figures. Samare with nine. He was quietly very, very good for us last season. Edwards, Eduardo as well, uh, all getting some, some decent goal numbers. If we have a quick look at assists. Uh, Jabing led the way, but Eduardo and Samare again in midfield were right there. Cook didn't do, again, didn't do badly. I just wonder if we can do better than him. Augusto did quite well. Razzini, Dean Garner, Martinez, Giordano. We can see all the other assist getters there. And average match ratings. Um, when he played, he played well. Did Dean Garner, though he was more or less just being used in Europe and Cup games, which were maybe a little bit easier for him. Razzini was a star. Turpi, when he played, did well. One of our, of course, young club trained goalkeepers that's going to be important for us for uh, squad registration. Edwards, again, I mean, he was, he was the Europa League player of the season. He did quite well. We can see everybody else there who averaged above a seven, which is excellent. And uh, Bevacqua, as the goalkeeper, was just below a seven. And again, that is absolutely fine. So, yeah, like I said, I don't think we need to do too much this summer, but we do need to uh, we do need to you know, build from a position of strength. If we're going to win the Champions League, we need to have a good deep squad. Um, so let's see what we can do this summer. In terms of, uh, of a budget... We have 56 million to spend. We have, uh, well, we're a little bit over our wage budget. No, no, we're not. We are 
under our wage budget by about 70 grand is it 80 grand um so we but we'll, so if we sell players obviously that'll go up we'll, we'll deal with that you know as the summer goes along so uh, let's get this show on the road so just one or two things to catch you up on here that we've uh, that we've done we're going to look to increase the youth category so we'll be category one which is excellent Training facilities are going to be upgraded, so that's good. Five million pounds there. Another five million in the youth facilities. And Oliver Brummer has been spotted leaving a nightclub in the early hours. To be honest, I don't care. <laughs> he's accepted. He's fine. Um, but you know, we the season's done. We've won. We've won the Europa League. Go and have fun, Oliver. All right, a couple of quick updates here. We have risen 19 places to 62nd in the European club rankings for next season. Uh, so winning the Europa League, well, we we obviously have points now, which we did. <laughs> Four points we got from our Champions League. Unbelievable. Um, so that's good. It may help a little bit in the seeding, though, to be honest. Probably not. We're still probably going to be in the fourth pot. Uh, the draw, of course, will be upcoming shortly. And the other bit of news is, if we just scroll down here, we have sold time on. Here we go here. He's gone off to West Ham. 27.5 million. That's what he was valued at. I maybe could have tried to hold on for a little bit more. You can see he's valued a little bit higher than that now. But to be honest, I think that's a good fee for Taimon. We, we know Belyasov is first choice. We have Sosa and uh, Callum Jones as backups. We didn't need him. And we've got 27 million. That is, I think, pretty good business. Let me know what you guys think. All right, a few things to catch you up on. First of all, we've been off with the Barcelona job or an interview for it anyway, but obviously we'll be rejecting that. Uh, we've had our fitness coach retire, which is the pain in the backside. Liverpool have won the Champions League, so that's who we'll be playing in the UEFA Super Cup, so that's exciting. And one other piece of news is that club captain Ross McCrory has left us. He's gone off to join Florentina. £22 million for him, so that's a nice little deal. Uh, now, you may remember Pippi, who we had on loan from Real Madrid. He's just joined Liverpool for £104 million as well. Now, he's a good player, but, you know, he wasn't particularly good for us. No doubt he's going to come back and haunt us massively, but, um, yeah, Pippi signed £104 million to Real Madrid, from Real Madrid, sorry. <laughs> We have breaking news this evening out of Sheffield Wednesday as manager Ozzy Villan announces the signing of his latest Brazilian wonder kid. Now for more on this, we cross live to local reporter Ernest Topbottom. And Ernest, what can you tell us? Thanks, mate. 20-year-old Fabiano has signed from Benfica for £58 million as manager looks to replace Ross McCrory. All right, so we have our first signing of the summer. It is Fabiano. We've signed him £58 million. It was a release fee from Benfica, uh, a B-rated signing from the uh, from the fans. Excited to see a global superstar at the club. We really have signed ourselves a good player here. He's on big money, 155 grand a week. I believe that makes him the top paid player at the club, so no doubt Ratzini will be knocking on my door. We managed to get him as a regular starter, which is good, so he shouldn't complain too much if he's not playing every week, though. I suspect when he's fit, he will play. You can see the rest of his contract details there. Let's have a look at him. And, well, this is somebody I was trying to sign before he went to Benfica. And, unfortunately, at that point, we weren't quite as good as we are now. And he did go there. This is my upgrade on Lewis Cook. He's going to hopefully come in and uh, play as a defensive midfielder, the deep-lying playmaker in the big Champions League games. Um, and I think he'll do a very, very good job of it. Uh, you can see he went to Benfica, 18 million from Internacional in Brazil. Um, that would have been a nice fee to get him forward, wouldn't it? But we've <laughs> just the extra 40 million a year and a half later or whatever it is. And, uh, well, I think he's going to do quite well. Now, if we do compare him to Lewis Cook, uh, we'll see exactly what sort of an upgrade we've got here. Um, Fabiano in the green, Cook in the blue. You can see with the exception of attacking uh, and maybe a little bit of vision, uh, although vision is a very strong point of Lewis Cook, uh, he basically encapsulates him. So uh, ideally, we'll look to keep them both. You can see that um, that Cook is wanted. We have promised him. There was a bid that came in from Tottenham. We've promised him if a £38 million bid comes in that we will sell him. Um, he is 29, so I wouldn't be against doing it. But if we can keep them both, uh, we've got two very, very strong options as the deep line playmaker this coming season. So a very quick update, but a very good update. Rosini has signed a new five-year extension to stay with 190 grand a week as a star player. Um, this is wonderful, wonderful news for us. He is, uh, well, he's going to be here. He's committed his future to us. One other piece of news is we do have a new affiliate club. Um, that is with uh, Krakowia, I think you pronounce it, a Polish team. Um, they've got good youth recruitment. They've got excellent facilities, as you can see there. 
Um, so it's going to be a good one. I think we could, uh, A, we can loan players out. And B, we might be able to sneak one or two good ones in as well. So, yeah, very, very happy. This is uh, this is a good news update. Enrico, thank you so much for your years of service, mate. And I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting another call, mate. i got to go. Hello. Carlos. Carlos, my man. How are you, mate? Good? Fantastic. Are you ready to sign that contract for me? Barcelona? Mate, why would you want to go there? You can't do this to me, mate. You can't do this to me. I've just sold the guy you're replacing. Okay, we have a small, small problem. Nothing hopefully we can't handle. But Enrico Del Prato has left uh, 17.75 million off to Lazio. He was a good player for us, a very solid defender, but we had just kind of moved past him, I think. Uh, now, I thought I'd signed his replacement. And this is why you don't sell players until you have their replacement at the club. Carlos Olo, another one, the kid. He was supposed to come in and be our uh, our right back, our right wing back. And I think he would have done quite well for us until Barcelona came in. Yeah, I'm really disappointed. He would have been, he's a good all-round, good attacking. Imagine, I think him going down one side, Beliosov the other. Would have been a very, very good, look at the pace. A very, very good uh, thing for us. But that has fallen through. Uh, we now have Martinez and our second uh, right back, of course, with uh, McCrory leaving. Our second right back is uh, Carl Rooks. We need to sign at least one right back from somewhere, and um, I'm not sure where that's going to be. All right, a quick update of the World Cup, which, of course, has been going on through the summer of 2026, where we currently are, and it is Belgium who have won the final 3-0 over Brazil. Now, we did have someone in the final. That was, of course, our brand new signing, Fabiano. There he is there in the Brazilian midfield. Unfortunately for him, um, it looks like they were thoroughly beaten in that final. But um, there we go. That is the winners. Let's have a quick recap, um, as I usually like to do, and just see exactly how everybody did. Now, we did have some players in the World Cup. I've got to try and remember who they all were. Now, it's the Croatia and USA got out of Group A. Brazil and Austria, which of course had Oliver Brummer. Now he picked up an injury and missed part of the World Cup, uh, but they both got through. France and Colombia, which featured uh, Rivas. Argentina, go on Australia, getting through the group. Excellent stuff. Argentina, of course, had Bev Qua, and Australia must have drawn Argentina. Go on. What a... Oh, God. Scenes. Absolute scenes. Poland and Morocco went through at the expense of China. Uruguay and Switzerland at the expense of Jamaica. Uh, we saw Belgium and Burkina Faso knocking out South Korea, Norway and Nigeria getting through uh, with instead of Paraguay, Denmark and New Zealand ahead of Canada. That would be a bit of an upset. Of course, Canada, a joint host of this World Cup. The Dutch and Cameroon. Do we have anyone in the Dutch squad? I don't think we did. Uh, knocking out Syria, England and Ghana knocking out Ecuador. Yeah, is that an upset? Maybe not. Germany, of course, featuring MB. Uh, they went through with Iran at the expense of Honduras. Spain and Chile knocked out Saudi Arabia. Wales and Japan knocked out Senegal. Russia featuring, of course, Belyasov. This is getting behind my head now. Uh, they went through with Mexico at the expense of uh, Uzbekistan. And it was Portugal and Dr. Congo knocking out Costa Rica. Now, that massive, massive brute stage, of course, brings us into a second round. We saw that Brummer's Austria got through. Brazil got through against the US. France knocked out Australia. You bastards. Uh, Argentina smashed Rivas's Colombia. So Bev Choir got the bragging rights there. Switzerland knocked out uh, Poland. Morocco knocked out Uruguay. There's an upset, I would imagine. Belgium just sneaking past Nigeria. Norway knocking out Burkina Faso. Denmark over Switzerland. Holland over New Zealand. England smashing Iran, Embiid, Germany smashing Ghana, Spain beating Germany, Wales extra time over Chile, Russia, Belyosov's Russia over Dr. Congo, and Mexico beating Pen uh, Portugal on penalties. Takes us into the third round. Bevqua is uh, through his Argentina beat. I tell you what, Bevqua's got some bragging rights. Beat the uh, Brummers Austria. Brazil knocked out France. Norway extra time over Switzerland. It was Belgium over Morocco. Germany, Embiid's Germany over Denmark. Holland knocked out the England side. It is uh, Spain beating Mexico and Beliasov's Russia getting through against Wales. Takes us into the quarterfinals. Belgium knocked out Bevacqua. Fabiano's Brazil beat, uh, beat Norway. Russia, Beliasov's Russia, 1-0 over MB's Germany. Uh, Holland beating Spain. So Russia into the semifinals. There's always one. Oh, and they got knocked out extra time by his new teammate Fabiano's uh, Brazil and Belgium beating Holland. If we go to the third place playoff, it was Russia. Wow, 4-0 over Holland. It's the game no one cares about. 
Uh, so that was a smashing win there. And then, of course, we saw Belgium almost as dominant in the final. So that was the World Cup. We had, in the end, six players go with the addition of Fabiano. And, uh, well, he made the final, but uh, got no further. All right, we have some breaking news, and it is, well, I've kind of sort of signed a right back. Joe Gomez, he was transfer listed at Liverpool, so we've signed him for 14.5 million. His wages are way too high for what I'd like, 58 grand a week. Uh, you can see even the fans aren't particularly, uh, particularly thrilled, but the important thing is that he can kind of play right back for us, so he will very much be back up. If you look at it, I mean... He's, he's good physically. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no issue there. I mean, he can play centre back. Obviously, the crossing is the concern. Um, that is without a doubt. But otherwise, he should be a relatively solid defensive right back for us. Um, and it gives us a little bit of time. We don't have to, I guess, waste money. Not that I didn't waste money on him, but I don't have to waste money on. Um, you know, trying to find somebody. I mean, he's he's played for Liverpool semi regularly. You'd say probably more so as a centre back, but he was transfer listed. He was available. Um, I was so desperate. I was going through the Liverpool and the Manchester squads, just seeing, <laughs> like, like manually searching for players, and um, which is borderline or right on the border of my rule of not using the search function. But I was actually having to go into the clubs and have a look. Um, yeah, and, and we've got him. So he's here. I mean, he's English. He might, he's probably going to be a useful tutor. He's more experienced. Um, so it might turn out to work out in our favour, but uh, yeah, Joe Gomez has joined us, 14.5 million from Liverpool. All right, we are at game day of the opening game of the Premier League season. That'll be next episode, of course, against Crystal Palace. We're also going to have Liverpool in the Super Cup next episode, which is exciting. A relatively quiet window for us, but I think that was always going to be the case, given how many and how many young players we've signed in previous windows. Um, so just a quick recap, the players departing, Ross McCrory, previous club captain, has left as has Enrico Del Prato, although in hindsight, I massively regret doing that. And we've also sent Kevin McLaughlin out on loan. The big in is Fabiano, a world-class midfielder. He's going to do a really, really good job for us, I'm sure, once he gets uh, once he gets settled in. The other player we signed, of course, was Joe Gomez. In the end, we made a profit on <laughs> Enrico Del Prato. Um, He'll be fine. I'm sure he'll be fine. How bad could he possibly be? Famous last words. But uh, yeah, we've got him. Three-year deal. We'll hopefully get a, a couple of right-backs in and be able to sell him. Um, and was there anybody else la end of last season? Uh, no. Oh, and just of course, uh, just time on left as well, didn't he? We, uh, that, uh, that was a fine. I'm happy that we, uh, we were able to get him out because we don't particularly need him anymore. So that is that. Now, there is one more signing that is all but done. Um, I wanted to get another wide player in just in case we wanted to go with wingers. Um, so we're just waiting on a work permit for Roberto Sanchez from Real Madrid. Yes, he's a wonder kid. Um, the good thing about signing a lone player, though, is that we won't have to play him. He can play both sides. He's right-footed, can play both sides. Good dribble, a decent crosser. Um, quick I think he ticks most, if not all, the boxes of what we want for, for a wide player. So he will hopefully, once he gets his work permit, assuming that he does, come in for us as well. Now, one thing uh, just to catch you up on quickly is Captain Lewis Cook will be captain. He will take over from, um, from McCrory. He was vice captain previously. He's got good leadership and uh, is well, you know, well in, in uh, what's the word, in He's in the squad. He's in the, you know, he's, he's well liked. And uh, Bakari Sumare will be, or Bubakari Sumare will become the new vice captain. And I think he again is, uh, well, he's experienced now, 27. He's been with us for a number of seasons. And I think is, well, he's one of the stars of the team, just quietly, isn't he? Um, so he has come in. If we look at the dynamics, we can see if we go to hierarchy that, um, Cook is in the already in the team leaders. Samare is just below him. We don't have the best support. I'm still a little bit hurt by this, to be honest, but uh, that is what it is. And social groups are coming together nicely. Um, so that is that. Finance-wise, we're over our wage budget. We do have a little bit to spend. Transfer window is obviously not closed yet. Um, but yeah, it, it, that just kind of is what it is. If I have a quick look at the medical center coming into the season, uh, not ideal. We do have a few injuries. William McQuaid managed to break his ankle in preseason, so he's missing for the first few months of the season, which is a little bit of a blow. I was hoping he would be more involved this season, but um, obviously with a broken ankle, that's not going to be the case. Uh, Marcus Edwards, he has broken ribs, um, so he's going to be out for a few weeks at the start of the year as well. Again, 
it kind of limits our chances to play someone with wingers. Now, he's he's contract up at the end of this year. We have a big decision to make on him. I did kind of sort of flirt around with selling him, but nothing really came in. So we'll see what happens with him. And the other one that is going to miss the start of the season is Jabing. He pulled ankle ligaments. Um, so he's going to be out for a couple of weeks at the start of the year as well. And he, of course, was, well, he set the Premier League record for assists last year. So that is a bit of a blow for us as well. And maybe crucially, can play right back decently. So... Um, we may see a little bit of him in positions we didn't see last season. So that is, yeah, not ideal news. And Martinez had, has had a bit of an injury at the start of the season. He's missed a little bit of preseason because of it, um, but he'll be back fit. Maybe not for Crystal Palace, but definitely for uh, he'll miss maybe one game, as, as I say. Uh, now, let's have a look at the team we have to start the season. Now, because we can play with wingers or not, I'll do it in this sort of way this time. If we start with strikers, Rosini, obviously, look at that. He is an absolute star. Uh, new contract in his back pocket as well. £81 million pounds he's worth. He is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the other options, of course, Oliver Brummer, who did very well for us last year. More of that, please, mate. Giordano, who I think the longer the season went on last year, the better he got. Pekovic, who signed a new deal at the club as well. So he's uh, he's a good player for us. And uh, Shuana is probably the fifth striker. Uh, we have a couple of guys who can play up there, but I think he's maybe the best option. A decent deep-lying playmaker there, I think, as much as anything else. Uh, if we go back to the number 10, we know that Jabing, this is where he shines. Uh, other options, uh, Edwards, who can play here. Uh, Shuana can play here. I think Arente's long-term is possibly uh, the backup. And uh, Flossie Clemons, we've got him up into the senior team to get a little bit of mentoring. I don't know how much we'll see him this season, but you can see he's training on well. Uh, so hopefully with some mentoring, that will continue to trend in the right direction. Uh, wide players, well, unfortunately, Rosini can play everywhere. But uh, on the left, it will typically be Marcus Edwards and Dean Garner, who was brilliant. Again, Dean Garner's contract is up at the end of this year. We have a decision to make on him. Over on the right-hand side, a lot of the same guys. Jabin can play over here. Um, Shuana is, this is sort of his most natural position. Um, but yeah, so we've got a lot of options that can play in different positions. Uh, ignore wide players in midfield, but uh, in the center of the park, we have Eduardo, who was absolutely superb for us last year. Uh, Samare, who we've just seen, is uh, and he's a very good player for us as well. Lewis Cook, the new club captain. Um, he can play up there, as can Augusto, who's been a little bit injured uh, through preseason, so isn't really fit coming into it. Leighton Clarkson is still around. He is a, just a player I like. Um, other options in the center of the park, if we have a look here. Sodlikov, who I will probably, closer to the end of the transfer window, loan out. I'm just still making my decision on him. Um, and we've seen most of the others, or we'll see them in their more natural position, which is a little bit deeper, uh, and that is right now. Fabiano, of course, is, this is the new man, and I'm really, really excited to see what he can bring. Lewis Cook obviously can play here, as can McQuaid. Uh, Mateo's going to see a little bit more first-team football this season, and also caught into the first team is Derek York. Now, he came in uh, well, quite a while ago now in the, in the uh, youth intake. He's a promising midfielder. He just... I've never really given him a chance. So we've called him into the first team. We're going to see how he does. Again, he'll get some mentoring. We'll give him some cup games and just kind of see how he goes uh, as much as anything. There is potent maybe, maybe a useful player there. Some of these nines and tens can in, in technicals can move up. There could be a useful player there for us. Uh, Wingbacks and fullbacks, oh, we'll come to those in a second. If we go straight back to centre-backs, though, Rivas uh, is obviously one of the stars for us. MB is a very good player for us as well. Mario. Is, uh, is doing quite well training on. Uh, we've also got Basia as uh, number four centre-back. Gomez obviously can play there. And the other one that we do have is uh, is Dylan Keach, um, who is sort of the fifth choice centre-back, I'd say, maybe even ahead of, of uh, Gomez. And there's a couple of others, that defensive midfielders, that can play back there. As I said, full-backs and wing-backs are kind of interchangeable. On the left-hand side, Beliasov is the star on that position. Uh, Sosa can play over there, as can Joe Gomez, though, but given right foot that he won't play over here, I don't think at all, actually, because Callum Jones is uh, an academy player that's uh, that's quite good as well. If we move it on over to the right, uh, Rivas can play over here, and I actually didn't realize he was quite as good as he is, so maybe that's a position we could look to use him in, though ideally we'd want him at centre-back. Uh, Mario, again, can play over here, uh, but he, he is definitely more of a centre-back. The main options, obviously, are Martinez, who is um, good, good, maybe not quite as good as I was hoping he'd be when we signed him. Uh, Gomez, we've seen, is is coming in as his backup. 
and um, and obviously McQuaid as well. But I mean, looking at this, you almost think Joe Gomez might be better as the centre back, and maybe we do look to use Rivas as a right back. If you guys have any thoughts on that, let me know in the comments. But he maybe is the better is the better option at right back. Uh, if we go back to goalkeeper, Bevacqua is obviously the star man. He is an absolute star. Uh, if we have the two, the backups fighting it out to be on the bench is, of course, Gary Turpey, who came through our academy, and Dale Bailey, who we signed, I think, this time last year, didn't we? And potentially he is quite good as well. So that is the team we have to start the season. Let me know how you think we'll get on this year. If you've enjoyed the episode, hit thumbs up. Of course, subscribe if you're new. And uh, yeah, do we need to strengthen anywhere else? As I said, right back is obviously the problem. May I, I'm, I'm relatively happy with what we've got. We've got good young players who are going to continue to get better. I'm really, I'm personally really happy with Fabiano as an upgrade at that, that defensive midfield slot. Um, that will, of course, mean Lewis Cook can play in, say, champion, uh, sorry, Premier League games where Fabiano will play in the Champions League. I think we've got a first and second string team that are roughly equal. Obviously, they're never going to be perfectly equal, but... I'm excited. I'm excited for this season to come, guys. As I said, I'll see you next time. We'll get the season underway against Palace and Liverpool in the Super Cup. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it already. Take care.